jump right into our lesson today entitled Bless the Lord at All Times. And I think that little three-letter word, Brother Rich, says it all. All times. We're just home folk this morning. Can I just talk to you from my heart for maybe 15, 20 minutes? Brother Grissom used to say, if you're bored, you won't be bored long. <laughs> Remember him saying that? <laughs> Let's jump right into our lesson text, reading from the book of Psalms 34. We'll read the chapter in its entirety, but it's not an extremely lengthy read. So if you'll bear with me for just a couple of moments, and then Pastor, if you would read our focus verse in a moment when we wrap up. I would appreciate it. Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may seek good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So we have a contrast in this reading. One side is talking about the blessings of God if we serve him. The other side is talking about the problems we'll endure in life if we don't. Does that mean we won't have problems if we serve him? No. But it means we have someone that's there to help us through those problems. And that's what we're going to talk about just for a few moments this morning. Can we go to the Lord and just invite his presence into this house this morning and ask him to help us? Jesus, we sincerely and humbly come before you. And we ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts today, to talk to our hearts. Give us strength, Lord. Give us direction, Lord. Give us something into our hearts today, some words, Lord, that would encourage us, that would strengthen and would help us, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. It's way too quiet in here this morning. Way too quiet. Y'all are going to have to help me a little bit. I think everyone's kind of worn out. I know my wife told me yesterday <laughs> when I got her at church camp and pulled her home, Brother Rich, she said, I just officially want to announce to you I'm done. <laughs> she wasn't done with church. She was done physically. She was completely and absolutely exhausted. So I think probably a lot of us feel that way today. For as long as David could remember, he had always loved to praise the Lord. During the countless hours he had spent alone, 
keeping and protecting his father's sheep, David had come to know the joy of God's presence and the thrill of God's power. David's experience with God in those lonely fields had made him a worshiper. One day while David was out in the fields, a messenger arrived. Come at once. Samuel the prophet is calling for you. Samuel? Calling for him? David could hardly believe his ears. And when David arrived, the unthinkable happened. Samuel anointed David to be the next king of Israel. A shepherd would be a king. It took a while for the shock to wear off, but later when David was finally alone again, he praised God for such a blessing and such an honor. Time passed and then another messenger came to David. This time it was a message from the king. King Saul commands you to come at once to his court to play your lyre for him. King Saul called, calling for him? How could that be? A lonely shepherd would now be a court musician and one step closer to the throne. David praised the Lord for such favor on his life. David continued to faithfully serve his father and his king, but then, but then his father's task took him to the Valley of Elah. He went to take food to his brothers who were soldiers in Saul's army, but David heard a Philistine giant's boasts and blasphemy, and God stirred up David's fighting spirit. With the blessing of his king, David took up his sling and five smooth stones and ran toward the giant to do battle. To the shock of the other soldiers, David triumphed over the great Philistine warrior. And how David praised God, oh, how David praised God yet again for his power and presence. David is a blessed man, wasn't he? His young heart thumped loudly with pride when he heard the women singing his praise. At that moment of triumph, however, he never could have imagined he had just made an enemy that was more lethal than Goliath. In facing this new enemy and afflictions that followed, David would learn something about God and his faithfulness, and he would learn something about praise. David had always praised God in the good times. He would now learn to praise God at all times, even, even the bad times. How many of you have experienced good times in your life? Every hand can go up. How many of us have experienced <clears throat> bad times in our life? Every hand can go up again. It's just life. That's all I know to say. Brother Jack, there's times that things go our way and there are times things don't go our way. The question <clears throat> that we need to ask ourselves, how am I going to respond when things don't go my way? What am I going to do? Am I going to get mad and pout and puff up and say God's not been good to me? Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. God's been very good to all of us. He woke us up this morning. We have breath in our bodies. We're not sick. We're able to be in his house. We're able to go about our daily routine. Are there things in your life that you wish would be different right now? Probably so. I know we could all say, you know, I wish this or I wish that. But first and foremost, God has been very good to every one of us. Now, I'm going to reveal something to you ladies here. In 1 Samuel 18 and 7, the Bible says, The women were rejoicing and singing. Saul had slain his thousands, but David slain his ten thousands. You women have the ability to make us guys jealous. Do you know that? <laughs> All of you men nod your head. They have a power over us, Brother Rich, if they want to use it on us. We just hope and pray they don't use it too often. <laughs> the women didn't mean a thing by it, but, but that's, this stirred up the righteous, righteous indignation in Saul. King Saul didn't like that. Saul slain his thousands, but David has slain his ten thousands. This caused a major problem, and Saul's jealousy meter redlined. It maxed out and went to pegging. It wanted to go farther, but it was at the, it couldn't go any farther. He was mad. He was mad. The seed of murderous envy was planted in Saul's heart that day. 
and it didn't take long for it to begin to grow. Now, I won't ask for a show of hands of anyone that's ever had anything that just, we're going to call it a burr under your saddle. Something that it didn't matter what you did, what you were doing, how busy you were, Brother Rich, it continually came back to you. And it haunted you, and you wanted it to go away. You wanted deliverance from it. But that burr under your saddle just seemed to be there just seemed to gouge and poke and the more you tried to remove it from there to get it away from you to get it out of your heart the more your mind dwelled on it it's called life and such was the case with Saul so shortly thereafter one day while David was playing the harp for Saul an evil spirit came upon King Saul he picked his spear up and he threw it at David And I don't think anybody could mistake this for the fact that David knew he was in trouble. Here he hadn't done anything wrong. He'd just been obedient to God. He'd done the things that God wanted him to do. God had blessed him. But now here he is with the king trying to take his life and kill him. So when it became evident that Saul was trying to kill King David, or that David that was going to be king, Saul's own son, Jonathan, secretly warned David, said, hey man, you better flee for your life. Dad's mad. He's real mad. And he's going to take you out. You know the bond, according to the Bible, Brother Bauer, that David and Jonathan had. A love and a bond between those two. And Jonathan said, hey, i got to tell my friend, he's in serious trouble. He's in serious trouble. Now let's back up just for a moment. All of David's young life was spent tending to his father's sheep on the backside of the pasture. I got to be honest with you guys. You, you know that we're involved in agriculture and some of the most peaceful times of my life, Brother Jack, is if I can get out in the field somewhere, whether I'm in a tractor or whether I'm out walking, looking, checking things, <clears throat> until this device right here goes off and starts ringing it's peaceful for a little bit and it used to be peaceful a lot because before we carried these things but don't you imagine in your mind that think of the time that David had there wasn't anybody else out there brother Bauer it was him and God and the sheep and the sheep weren't going to talk to him God talked to him and he talked to God and they communed back and forth and there was a deep love and reverence in David's heart for all the good things that God had done for him how he had taken care of him how he had blessed him it was easy to serve the Lord when he didn't have any distractions no deterrence everything was going good at that time and then Samuel called for him and anointed him to be the next king of Israel. And then God delivered Goliath into the hands of David, and he removed his head from his shoulders. Another great victory had been given to David. Everything was going David's way. Have you ever had a time in your life that you just felt like, well, I'm on a roll. Everything's just clicking right along here. I don't mean to bust your bubble, but I can tell you, just hang around a little bit. It won't be that way every day, all day long. There will be things that will come our way that we don't want to have to go through. Now the question becomes, David's running for his life. Now how is he going to respond? It's easy to worship God when everything's going our way. The kids are gathered in, we're having birthday parties, <clears throat> littles are running and playing, everybody's laughing, no problems, everything's going good. But how about tomorrow when reality sets back in? You get back up, you walk back out the door, Brother Rich, and it hadn't rained in going on six weeks, and the forecast is saying it's going to be 108. If you don't like that forecast, listen to a different meteorologist. It might be 110. 
Job's comforter. <laughs> How are we going to respond then? Or maybe it's something in your own life that you've gone through that you didn't want to have to go through. How are we going to respond? It's called life. It's just part of life. Now, time won't allow us to cover all of the details of what David went through in his life. But just as we find in our lives, there were times of joy, happiness, peace. And in Sister Bower, there were times of trials and tribulations. None of us want to go through the trials and tribulations. You say, well, if you're a Christian and you have to go through them, what's the difference in being a Christian and being, and, and being in the world if you're going to go through trials and tribulations? Now, I can tell you what the difference is, and it's a big one. When we go through them, we got God on our side. Right. We got a very present help and peace in time of need. But when we're in the world and we look around and we say, now what am I going to turn to? Well, you can see what the world turns to. And they wake up with more problems tomorrow than they have today. That's not the answer. Jesus is the answer. He's the only answer. David learned a lesson that will keep us through all of our trials and afflictions. He learned that whether we're on the highest mountaintop or whether we're in the lowest valley, God's there. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's always there. Psalms 34, 17 through 19 tells us, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Not some of them, not part of them, all of them. And I'm getting ready to close. One Friday night, I had gone up to get ready to pull my wife home yesterday morning after church camp. And Brother Scott Graham preached a, a masterful message. And Brother Rich, I just began to let it kind of soak into my mind. Even through the day yesterday on the way home, Chad and I were talking and I was telling him a little bit about it. The title of it was, The Accomplishments Are in the Days. And you say, well, where did he go with that? The accomplishments are in the days. He said, if a church has an outpouring of the Spirit of God, Brother Bauer, there's... 10 or 15 or 20 people pray through the baptism of the Holy Ghost in a, in a great revival. Everybody around the area is going to be calling, what you do? And he said, I can tell you what you did. You got up and you preached again. He said, that's the same man that last time he preached a month or six weeks ago, there was two or three families got mad and Brother Jack, they left the church because they didn't like what he preached. So what would you do different? I just got back up that next morning, Brother Bauer, and he said, I went to work on my next lesson after they'd left. I just went to prepare, and the accomplishments are in the days. And he said, the accomplishment wasn't that one day when all those people prayed through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The accomplishment was stay in the course. Get back up when things are going great. Get up and serve the Lord, worship him, and give him praise. When things aren't going great, what are we going to do? We're just going to hibernate and say, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not going to church today. I'm mad. We've all probably felt that way, if we'd be honest. Yeah. A time or two, I'm just I'm not going to go today. I just don't want to go. Uh, I, I don't feel like things are going right for me and my heart and life, and I think I'll just stay home. Well, Brother Jack... The one place I need to be is at the house of the Lord when I have a problem like that. I need the preacher to preach to me, the pastor to talk to me, to say, hey, I'm praying for you guys. God's going to help you through this. It's just called life. The accomplishments are in the days. Not one day, but every day. Get up Monday morning, we go serve the Lord to the best of our ability. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Some days are good days, some days aren't so good. Brother Jack, it, it reminded me of what Brother Grissom used to tell us that his elder pastor, Brother Shoemake, told him, and, it, and you can sum it up, it never changes. His message back in that day was get you a steady gait. This is a long distance run for most, most likely in life. When you begin to serve the Lord, unless the Lord just, you're taken away in a tragic accident or something, you're probably going to be in it for a while and the Lord's going to be refining us. He's going to be working on us. Sometimes refining isn't much fun. How many of you found that to be the case? We don't want to be ground on. We don't want to be honed on. We don't want to have to go through all these things. But it's part of the process of getting us ready for the rapture of the church. It's part of the process to get us ready for heaven. The Bible gives us a list of things that Jesus wants in his people. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. There's some of them I haven't achieved yet. I'm still working on it. The Lord's still working on me about it. And if I don't pass that test, I've told you guys before, if I don't pass it today, I'm going to get it again. It's going to come back around full circle, and I'm going to get that same test over again. Okay, you, you didn't do too good. We're going to give it to you again. What are you going to do this time? I told you I was just going to talk to you from my heart for a few minutes, and, and, and I'm, I'm done. I'm closing. The accomplishment, is, and he did a, a masterful job. I couldn't touch top, side, nor bottom of what Brother, Brother Graham had to say. The accomplishment is in the days. One day at a time. One church service at a time. Brother Bauer, did everything go the way we wanted it to go today? In the big scheme of things, it, it, it probably don't matter because we know who's in charge. If today wasn't the best day we ever had, we get up tomorrow and we ask the Lord for direction and help, and we put one foot in front of the other and we start going again. If there aren't as many people here this morning as we'd like to see, we just do what we know to do. We ask God for help. We invite people to church, and we keep loving people. That's what Chad said yesterday when we was talking. He said, Dad, it's all about loving people. I encountered a deal here a week or so ago, and I won't tell you today, but I might at some point. It's hard to have love for that man at that moment, Brother Rich. Chad said, Dad, it's all about loving people. Would you agree some people are easier to love than others? I love this little strawberry blonde over here. Do we see eye to eye on everything? No. But you know what? I have a great tolerance for her because I love her. And if she didn't have a great tolerance for me, she'd have been gone a long time ago. But when you love somebody, when you love people and the love of God's in your heart, it's easier to work through some of those trials and tribulations that none of us want to go through. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll always be with us. Lord bless you.